He wasn't the kind of fighter that you'd see in a boxing instructional. There are no YouTube videos where his techniques are studied and analyzed. It was said that his feet were slower than molasses in January, and his looping arm punches were telegraphed from miles away. But he always gave his opponents the same warning, saying, I may not be the most stylist guy out there, but I know what is effective. I can guarantee you one thing. I'm going to bust your ribs with my left hook, and there isn't a damn thing you can do about it, because now you're coming in the ring with... Rafael Limon was born in a poverty-stricken village in Mexico called Tlaxco. His father was a soldier but had a drinking problem and would routinely beat his mother. She would eventually leave him, taking Rafael and his siblings to live in Mexico City. When Limon was 15, a man suddenly grabbed him on the street. Limon punched him, running back to his house. The man followed him home, and Limon readied for a fight, but his mother stepped in between the two introducing the man as his biological father. This caused confusion for Limon as he always thought that the drunken soldier from his childhood was his real father. Limon would join the army himself at the age of 18. He watched some of his fellow soldiers boxing and mocked one of his friends who was bloodied and sparring. The major in charge challenged Limon to get into the ring since he found it so funny. Limon accepted the challenge and to the major's surprise, took to the sport immediately. The Major noted that Limon threw punches like a bazooka, and the nickname stuck. Seeing his potential, the military saw fit to send him to be coached by Kid Rapides, who trained the legendary Jose Napolis. Limon's amateur career would be short but active, getting in 46 fights over a 10-month period. But he quickly realized how brutal the game could be when he killed another fighter in the ring. Lamone would later lament his decision to go into boxing, saying, I hate it. It's awful. You can go blind. You can get killed. You can lose your marbles. The only reason I do it is for the money. In 1972, Lamone turned professional at the age of 18. He would fight exclusively on the Mexico City circuit before being brought in as an opponent for the popular Bobby Chacon. Lamone had a 20-7 and record, and was thought to be of little threat to the favored former featherweight champion. But Limon would decision Chacon over 10 rounds, and one of boxing's greatest rivalries was born. The victory put Limon on the map, and as his confidence increased, so did his audacity. On February 1, 1976, an angry bazooka Limon would punish a former featherweight contender named Vicente Yambito Blanco over 10 rounds. Limon was upset because Blanco's manager had said that Limon's win over Chacon meant nothing because Chacon was a shot fighter. After pummeling Blanco, Limon walked to the corner of his opponent and punched Blanco's manager in the face, telling him, Now your fighter is shot. Limon would then take out Turo Noji and former world champion Lionel Rose in televised appearances. He would go on the longest win streak of his career, taking out one club fighter after another until a second match with Chacon would end in a technical draw. Three months later, Limon would challenge Alexis Arguello for the WBC Super Featherweight title. Limon would show the classy Arguello no respect. He insulted a Nicaraguan's heritage before the match, and during the fight itself, he attempted low blows and headbutts to get Arguello off his game. But it was Limon who started to bleed from the first round on. Arguello teed off on him with his best power shots, but Limon never went down, refusing to give up until the fight was finally stopped in the 11th. Taking a page out of Jake LaMotta's book when he fought Sugar Ray Robinson, Limon would taunt Arguello, reminding him that he couldn't knock him down. Limon offered an alibi after the fight, saying, I met a nice Filipino girl and I didn't train right. I don't want to make excuses, but I was addressing other business instead of training. Five months later, Limon would face arch-rival Bobby Chacon again. Limon would give Chacon the beatdown for most of the 10 rounds, but lose a disputed decision. He would win in losing, however, as he was then matched against Idelfonso Bethelmi for the now-vacant WBC Super Featherweight title. Limon would win the title, 
but state that he didn't feel like a legitimate champion because the real champion in Alexis Arguello had moved up in weight. Limon's reign as champion would be short-lived as he would face Cornelius Boza Edwards in March of 1981. Edwards was a fighter based out of Great Britain, and Limon would make classless remarks to get under his opponent's skin. This time he referred to the Lupi Pintor Johnny Owen ring tragedy when the challenger from Wales died after getting a beating from the Mexican champion. Limon promised to do the same to Edwards because in his words, that's what happens when Mexicans fight the British. But Edwards would go mano a mano with Limon and accomplish the unthinkable, flooring him in the fifth round and taking a hard-fought decision. Over a year would elapse before Limon would get another shot at the title. This go around against the Filipino bad boy, Rolando Navarrete, who had dethroned Edwards. Limon would employ his usual clowning tactics, sticking out his tongue and chin, mocking the new champion. Navarrete would land at will, but become another unsuspecting victim being led to the quicksand, as Limon tricked him into expending too much energy. Limon has not been too kindly in his comments about Navarrete. He calls him a second-class champion. Under a minute to go. Round two. Toe to toe in the middle of the ring with body shot. Left uppercut scored by Navarrete, and again Limon visibly looking back at him. Hard to stick your tongue out with a mouthpiece. Tim, I wouldn't want to see him get hit when he's sticking his tongue out, I'll tell you that. Solid right hand spin. Limon the challenger, and he hangs on. First time he's grabbed in this fight. He was shook, Tim. He was hurt. And Navarrete knows he hurt him. Short left hand by the champion, not much damage. Now Lamone again, derisively pointing his chin forward to Navarrete, trying to convince the champion that he was not hurt, but he was shook. Under a minute to go in the fifth round. And he scores a solid right hand. He scores the right hand. Landed a good right hand. And another solid left. And another right. The right hook of Navarrete has been the big difference in this fight, Tim. Now this is Lamone says, come on, let's fight. Solid inside, punching in a good right hand and again. Lamont stays right there. Never ready, really blasted. Lands another combination. Never ready, and Mike has been encouraged here. He's been playing big punches and he's going to go forward. Another combination. Lamont has a chin of iron, but even iron can get worn out. Navarrete's blowing the shot. 
you ought to punch it. On the right hand again by the champion, there's a slight nick under the right eye of the challenger, Lamont. Lamont's going to rolling him on and saying, come on, come on. Lemon was now a two-time champion, and this time he felt like a real one. In his first defense, he would take on an underrated slugger from South Korea named Chung Il Choi, who floored and nearly defeated Navarrete only eight months earlier. Choi would win every round, bloodying Lemon's face. His sharp right hand kept slamming into Lemon's head, but as writer Joe Bruno put it, it was like brushing the rock of Gibraltar with a feather. Lemon was cut on his scalp and then on the corner of his left eyebrow, but the sight of his own blood only inspired him to fight harder. After the bout, Limon's manager Cuyo Hernandez said, In all my years, I've never seen a fighter who makes winning so difficult. It seems like every fight for him is tough. Just once, I'd like to see him have an easy fight. But for Bazooka, there is no such thing as an easy fight. Nothing comes easy. Things would only get harder in his next bout, a fourth fight with Bobby Chacon. Chacon did appear to be further over the hill than Limon. He had been stopped by mutual opponent Cornelius Boza Edwards, and his wife Valerie had committed suicide. Lamone then took his role of being a villain too far, mocking Chacon about the suicide of his wife. He told Chacon that his wife was in hell, and he would be taking him there also. The words would backfire as Chacon vowed to fight for the memory of his dead wife.
slowly. Takes a look. Bobby Chacon almost had the champion down on three occasions and finally got him in the 15th. It is Chacon. The bout would be voted fight of the year, but it would mark Limon's last foray in the spotlight. Eight months later, he would be destroyed by Hector Camacho in only five rounds. Limon said, I had to go to Puerto Rico and was willing to go for the money, but I was scared when I fought Hector Camacho. I was frightened of getting hurt. After that fight, I was 29 years old and said, I don't want to fight anymore. Limon would retire, but return three years later as an even emptier shell of himself. His recuperative powers now long gone, he would take beating after beating, often resorting to clowning tactics to hide the fact that he was no longer the warrior that seemed impervious to pain. Lamone would finally retire at age 40 and then return to active duty for the Mexican army before retiring altogether in the late 1990s. He would be married five times, have five children, and would invest in real estate in his native Mexico, where he was currently doing well.